This is Arkansas 11, KTHB Little Rock. The Clinton High School class of 93 graduates. It's an exciting night, one Dan Elliott will always remember, but for the wrong reasons. They came up to me and he said, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, those shoes aren't acceptable for the, and you can't walk. And so by this time, it's like 15 after seven and we graduate in 15 minutes at 7.30. Dan was wearing black and brown suede Nikes, his best shoes. Another boy wore these hiking boots and he was allowed to walk. In the class meetings that we uh, had about a, a few weeks ago, we did stress that, uh, and the class agreed about certain things that we're gonna wear and tennis shoes was not one of those things. Hutto still has Dan's diploma. He says the school should waive the two days detention those who don't participate in graduation usually have to serve to get diplomas. Hutto says all the graduates had six weeks to buy the right clothes and shoes for graduation. Elliot says he thought he already had those and now he'll never be able to walk out on this football field with all his friends and get his diploma. It ruined his night. He will never forget this night and it's over for him but I don't want it to happen to another child. I hate this has happened because I've spent many hours with Dan and uh, with a lot of, lots of problems and I would just, uh, I, was just I was glad he was gonna graduate. Dan still has the cap and gown he had to buy for a graduation that never happened. Many friends and classmates plan to protest with a march on Thursday morning. Kristen Terrell, 11 Action News, Clinton. Dan Baker was shot and killed this afternoon during a confrontation at Jones Toyota on University Avenue. Up until last week, Baker worked for dealership owner Herbert Jones. About 10 minutes after four, a gentleman came here to the business. Uh, he entered the business, went inside, uh, became involved in a verbal altercation with one of the employees of the business here. Uh, one shot was fired. Uh, by uh, an employee. Uh, the victim was struck in the chest. Baker had managed the Butler Road apartments that are owned by Jones. Several weeks ago, Little Rock City officials went to the complex to look for housing code violations. Last week, Jones reportedly fired Baker as the complex manager. We do have a suspect in custody being interviewed at the police department at this time. Uh, I, there were uh, I don't know any other motive or any other information about the shooting. Uh, there were apparently only two people in the room when the incident took place. After the shooting, Herbert Jones was taken to police headquarters where he refused to give police any statement. He has been charged with first degree murder and will be arraigned in the morning. Tonight he is free on his own recognizance. Baker had been in the news last year when a group of residents at another property he managed complained about conditions there. Or anything. If you have never known anyone directly affected by AIDS, that's about to change. Brenda Snell and her 21-month-old son, Stephen, are two of the faces behind the statistics. I didn't know that I had HIV until, two, well, to be two years in August when Stephen was born. Brenda contracted the virus that causes AIDS from her husband, who was unaware he had the disease. Stephen developed full-blown AIDS about a month after his birth. When I found out that I had this and I told my family, out of four members of my family, only one stood by me, and that was my sister. The official numbers for Arkansas, 2,327 reported HIV cases. Of those, 1,154 have AIDS, and it's estimated another eight to 10,000 Arkansans are HIV positive, but many don't know it. For little Arkansas, as small as we are, those are just, they're just terrible numbers. Gene Holloway heads the Arkansas AIDS Foundation, which educates people about the illness and provides free anonymous testing. Two local colleges have asked the foundation to expand its services to their campuses, but the need is outpacing donations. Like one of our, our good doctors made the comment, he said, it's just like um, you on a railroad track and you hear a train, you can't see it, but you can hear it. And man, it's coming at you. And, and it's just fixing to roll over you. It's just fixing to be one of the dangest epidemics that hits the state that we've ever seen. 
For Brenda's family, the epidemic is already here, and she's grateful for the daily support offered by the Regional AIDS Interfaith Network, or RAIN. Its volunteer care teams help out with errands and help her through moments of despair. It's really nice to have people, you know, that care, that, you know, aren't afraid of you. You know, they're there to love you and be with you all the way, you know, till the very end. And for her, that type of compassion is priceless. Ann Jansen, 11 Action News. Nine years ago, Bill Looney moved to Broadmoor to be closer to his grandkids and further away from crime. But a new UALR study says this quiet lakeside community could be a juvenile crime hotbed in just a few years. I was really shocked. I'd never heard of him. He's never contacted anybody in Broadmoor. Dr. Jeff Walker says his two-year study was meant to help Broadmoor avoid what's happened in other Little Rock neighborhoods where crime is out of control. If you catch the areas early enough, though, I think you can stop the progression from no delinquency to a high delinquency area. That's where the money needs to go. That's where the community groups need to go. That's where the police effort needs to go. Walker says markers that identify future high crime areas include vacant or dilapidated homes and a shifting population. Broadmoor's tidy, moderate income homes don't fit that description, but Walker says as more renters move into the neighborhood, people lose touch with their neighbors. You don't have as much contact, you don't have as much organization. That's when there's the opportunity for the juveniles to start getting away with things. Looney says the study has done more harm than good. He fears it will lower property values. Well, it could turn people who are looking for homes away. If they keep their very strong neighborhood watch, if they keep the very strong uh, sense of neighborhood and sense of community that they have, it may very well never go any further. Walker says he's been largely misunderstood by Broadmoor residents and the many positive things he's had to say about this area have not been reported. He plans to meet with the Broadmoor Crime Watch Group in July and explain his study more thoroughly. Sandy Finkbeiner, 11 Action News, Little Rock. In the fall of 1991, the mutilated body of Amy Childry was found in this Lono County Cemetery. Two teenagers, one of them Amy's brother, and an older man were charged with killing the girl in a ritual sacrifice to Satan, a horrifying fact that didn't surprise the sheriff. We had had uh, activity off and on in this county for several years of uh, uh, some type of satanic uh, practices. Like that murder, the West Memphis suspects are young, and so were the victims. It's not known just how widespread devil worship is in Arkansas, but it is highly appealing to teenagers in search of power and identity. And that's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that's almost always found in these little, uh, what I call, homespun, self-styled groups. And, you know, they spring up and they go away. There's somewhat of a splinter group of the satanic uh, church. Uh, that uh, do their own thing. The bodies of the West Memphis boys were reportedly sexually mutilated. The murders took place in early May, coinciding with the satanic holy day Beltane, which requires human sacrifice. Body parts is highly prized, particularly the uh, uh, testicles. The Wojciech says most brutal, highly publicized so crimes are probably not the work of real satanic worshipers. And true generational Satanists, if they exist, are not the ones that are going to, you know, uh, do a crime that they're going to be discovered that easily. Nor are they the ones that go put satanic messages up on walls. True satanic cults or power-hungry teenage misfits, the results are equally tragic and frightening. It doesn't matter what our belief is when we're dealing with this, it matters what they believe the ones that are doing it, and further than that, it matters, you know, what's been instilled in the younger one's minds by the older one. Sandy Finkbeiner, 11 Action News. The three suspects were led away in a tight knot of police officers. The first out was Jesse Miss Kelly, followed by Charles Baldwin, and then Michael Eccles, each teenager greeted by shouts and threats from a big and angry crowd of spectators. Why should they have any time? They should be prosecuted right away. Save us a lot of time to get it over with. The little boys were found in a drainage ditch almost a month ago. Eight-year-olds mutilated and beaten to death. Sickening killings that might have been part of a satanic ritual. I couldn't comment on any purpose, uh, mode, uh, MOs. I, I, I really couldn't comment on that. 
but a Marion High School classmate claims the suspects are devil worshippers and that Michael Eccles is the leader and wants to be called Damien like the movie character. Yeah, we all knew, I mean... That they were in the devil worship? Yeah, everybody just assumed, you know, or they were going to end up in jail or something sooner or later. Investigators say they do have evidence against all three, but at a morning news conference, they wouldn't say what it is. We had to round some of the edges off, but the pieces gradually started fitting in place, and uh, we finally made a clear picture of what took place. Gitchell isn't sure if the young victims knew the suspects, but Pam Hobbs thinks her murdered son might have met Damien Eccles in their old neighborhood. I think I've seen him around. He's, uh, I don't know whether they're kin to him all, but the family members, yes, I live beside him on Winchell Street in West Memphis, Arkansas. Pam and Terry Hobbs walked out of the suspect's first court appearance after her ex-husband lunged at Eccles and the judge threatened them with jail. The judge, these are our kids. Lose your little kids like this. See how you get the feeling about, about the whole thing. That's why all three of them are punks. Punks! The suspects were arrested overnight at two Crittenden County trailer parks, and one neighbor was stunned to hear that Jesse Miss Kelly was among the accused. He was a good kid. He approached me like that. He used to play with my kids. Miss Kelly and his friends Charles Baldwin and Michael Damien Eccles are being held without bond, but the location is a secret because the emotions of West Memphis are so very strained. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, West Memphis. The United States Department of Agriculture is the third largest federal agency. It has more than 100,000 employees nationwide. We're involved in housing, water, sewer, hospitals, transportation, forestry, uh, in addition to agriculture and, and farming. Helping run all those programs now is Bob Nash. The Arkansan is an undersecretary of agriculture in the Clinton administration. You used an expression a minute ago, you want to make this place more user-friendly for farmers. How can you do that? Cut down on the red tape, the rules and regulations that they have to go through. We don't want them to have, have to have a horde of lawyers and accountants to be able to access our funds. We want to shorten the length of time it takes to get a grant or a loan for their programs. President Clinton was elected by promising to focus the White House less on foreign policy and more on domestic programs that help people like farmers. But his staff says it's easy to see how the priorities can shift out of focus. Well, I, I think in fairness it is very easy to see why foreign policy uh, can take a lot of time here because that's been one of the things that I don't think any of us could have had a proper gauge on as to how much time it literally takes. But this is a White House filled with people who grew up in a farm state, people who understand what small town life is all about. The past 10 years have been a rough time for some farmers and you come from a farm state and now you have a chance to do something for them. What kinds of things can you do? Well, for years, uh, working at the state and local level, I've been somewhat critical of the federal government, and now I'm sitting in the chair, so I, I want to make try to make a difference. Uh, I think we can uh, put together programs that will help, number one, increase the quality of life for people in rural areas, to make rural areas a better place to live and work. The Rodney King case has focused a great deal of attention on problems facing American cities. But on soybean farms in the Arkansas Delta, and fish farms on the Grand Prairie. Arkansas farm families are hoping this White House remembers its roots and keeps their communities in mind also. Joe Quinn, 11 Action News. Cleanup crews found the truck toppled on its side with a load of acid shuffled in the fall. Some containers were leaking, their contents mixing and forming a worrisome cloud of vapors. Our fire department, the Jacksonville Fire Department, is on the scene, along with Office of Emergency Services, to determine uh, the exact contents of the vehicle uh, and determine if there might be any hazard whatsoever. Experts weren't sure which chemicals were making the fog, but hoped the main ingredient wasn't nitric acid, an explosive liquid they knew was on board. Given the right circumstances and the mixture of, of possibly water or some other catalyst could cause an explosion. As a precaution, police officers took to the streets, clearing out neighborhoods in a mile-wide circle. A few displaced residents headed for the boys' club. They told me for safety's sake to get everybody out of the apartment complex. So I went around, knocked on all the doors, and all my tenants cooperated with me, and they got out. 
2,000 junior high students were evacuated too, herded into the high school for a lot of noise and a little work. I'm in pre-algebra right now, and this is a geometry book, and I'll be doing that when I get in high school, but not right now. Outside, anxious parents were streaming to campus, wondering what to do next. We have no idea. We really don't have no idea. We we're thinking about go visit some folks up in BB. The evacuation had spread to Main Street by noon, where doors were locked and nerves were frayed. Shut all of Main Street down and hadn't told us anything about when we're going to be able to reopen or whatever. But by mid-afternoon, Jacksonville was back in business. Chemists had taken a peek inside the truck, decided the danger was gone. Why, whether it's a, a lapse of time, since nothing has occurred or what, I do not know. With the assessment complete, the cleanup can begin, which shouldn't take more than a few hours. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, Jacksonville. More than 12 hours after an overturned truck turned life upside down for thousands of residents in Jacksonville, this crane arrived on the scene. It would slowly pluck some 250 bags and drums of a variety of chemicals out of the belly of the disabled vehicle. Alone, the acids, ammonia products, and caustic soda were not considered a threat to the community, but together they could have meant disaster. And when you have acids and bases combining together, there is a heat reaction that will take place, a violent reaction and from that point. But as far as a hazardous product or hazardous vapors being generated, uh, I don't think we have a major problem from that. More than 2,000 school children and another three to 5,000 Jacksonville residents were evacuated from their homes, schools, and businesses. One drum of hydrochloric acid was leaking, but there were no lethal combinations of hazardous chemicals. Worried parents could take their children from makeshift classrooms home. And um, maybe this stuff, can, they can get it cleared up and we go back home and relax. Emergency crews had hoped to get the accident scene cleaned up by nightfall, but the slow and careful process required portable lights for the nighttime cleanup. We have emergency lighting, portable lighting that we use for crime scenes that we have at our access. The fire department has portable lighting they use. We also have the resources of the Little Rock Air Force Base who have the portable run light lights that we can use. Lisa Beckham, 11 Action News, Jacksonville. Jacksonville's firefighters are tying up the loose ends after a long night of cleaning up the acid spill. At the scene, a dirt-moving company stands by while APNL removes a power pole damaged in the crash. The tractor-trailer rig and its hazardous cargo are gone. The operation went slowly, but several agencies working together kept a potentially dangerous situation in check. What we would classify as a spill is when liquid comes out of the containers, runs out of the trailer and into the ditch and is spreading into a waterway or something, and we didn't have that situation. We had a small leak, which caused the fog that we seen that concerned us because we wasn't for sure for a while what the fog was. That fog wasn't serious, and it turns out neither was the leak. If any acid did leak out, it didn't make it past the two sand barriers built on either end of the trailer, and the water in between was neutralized with soda ash. When we open the trailer up, there's a possibility that a half a cup or something, you know, a small amount, but nothing to be concerned with. So now the worry is over, and rescue workers are hoping to be emergency free for a while to catch up on lost sleep. Kristen Terrell, 11 Action News, Jacksonville. The signs at the zoo say, don't feed the animals. and never ever throw things in with the animals. But sometimes accidents happen. I was over here getting some video of the chimpanzees and uh, I leaned over to make a shot and when I did, my glasses, they were hanging from my shirt and they fell out. And when they hit the ground, the chimpanzee scooped them up and took off with them. And Vince captured it all on videotape. The learning process right before our eyes. Accidents will happen. This one just turned out to be, well, really cool, man. Dave Pilot, 11 Action News.
Six days and no homicides in Little Rock. But for 1993, the murder rate is already soaring toward an all-time high. Those numbers in themselves alarm us, and they have for some time now. The numbers are these, 30 murders, 24 involving handguns, 14 suspects under the age of 21. Three of the victims were youths. They look for the gun because it's a symbol of power and control, and so they, they turn to the gun rather than looking for alternatives. Sometimes I just be riding around my house and all of a sudden just hear some gunshots go off. Antoine Williams and his sister Valen are enjoying their first full day of summer. At their young age, they take for granted the element of violence in their neighborhood. But they're determined not to become victims, a statistic like some of the teenage gang members they know. And what they want to do is what they want to do, but then again they have to look at the consequences. They can go to jail or they can wind up in a grave or something like that. I mean, they, they can be put on one of these crosses over there. At one time, this bloody corner was known as the epicenter of the murder zone in Little Rock. So far this year, the crimes have been spread out all over the city. Still, these crosses are a grim reminder of the lives lost to murder here. Police say people still aren't getting the message. Y'all stay away from them gangs. They'll kill you. So our children basically are uh, reaping what we as adults have sown. And it's up to us adults to fix this place for our children. If, if we want them to survive. Last year, Little Rock didn't have its 30th murder until July 12th. This year, police are on guard for what they fear will be a long, violent summer. Lisa Beckham, 11 Action News, Little Rock. Darkness had just fallen when the violence began, erupting first on West 14th Street, where police say a man kicked in a door and started firing a shotgun. The blast hurt two teenagers. There are some conflicting statements about what occurred to uh, lead up to the shooting but uh, we're still continuing that investigation. Less than two hours later, more gunfire, this time from pistols aimed by police officers. A suspect named Richard Polk was killed, shot to death at his rented home on Washington after allegedly threatening the patrolman. He uh, opened the screen door, pointed the nine millimeter weapon at one of the officers on the front porch, at which time they both fired. The officers involved say they went to Polk's house with his wife to settle a child custody dispute. They've been put on leave while this latest use of deadly force is investigated. This is the 13th time this year that the officers have had to use deadly force. However, not all of those were directed at uh, persons as there were some animals involved who uh, attacked officers. Before the night was done, Little Rock detectives were sent to another shooting, called to East 21st, where Theotis Alexander was found stumbling across a porch. He had been hit several times, the wounds critical. And no one there saw anything, they just heard the shots. We haven't been able to talk to him because of his condition, so we don't really know what happened. And just past the city limits, the night's fourth shooting left Burt Westerman in serious condition, and peacekeepers worried about so much violence so fast. We always speculate ourselves as to some extent on what kind of uh, year we're going to have from here on out. And if last night is any indication, the news isn't good. Dinah Tyler, 11 Action News, Little Rock. As summer heats up, so does the violence. But at Carver YMCA, Benny Johnson is doing something to stop it. We have you no know, rap session and things like that to keep the kids, you know, occupied, keep them off the streets. As one participant in the program said, teenagers are interested in two things: social life and money. Stop the Violence addresses both those interests with activities like basketball and weightlifting, and through talks by role models. It's just showing me that, you know, you don't want a job where you have to look over your back all the time, you know, wondering um, if you're going to live the next day or not. Tim Scarborough is headed to college this fall on a football scholarship. He uses the program to keep in shape both physically and spiritually. It gets your mind off of different problems that you have. You know, you can come and people that help you and stuff so you don't have to go out and, you know, start a fight or whatever. Some people have tempers, they're uh, learning to control the temper. They can turn to uh, air out their problems and frustrations by talking instead of by other uh, avenues. 
Keenan Sane has been with the program since its inception. Now on his way to college on a teaching scholarship, the Central High graduate wants to help other youngsters reach their goals. I wouldn't say I was, I'm a role model, but I would like to say that I'm, I'm trying to set a good example you know, for other people and if they want to follow, they, they can come along. Lisa Becca, 11 Action News, Little Rock. Me being a teenager, I come face to face with violence every day and it's not fun. Another success story from Operation Safe Summer, a former gang member who has now turned his life around and is telling his story to help the program which helped him. And today the help came from several local churches. We felt the churches then, as they were kind of an umbrella under which all these people operate, the churches, synagogues, mosques, ought to make some sort of visible effort of saying we're behind this effort. And I think what we're also saying is it's just not a black issue, it's not a white issue, it's a youth issue. Ken Richardson is in the middle of Operation Safe Summer, in the streets trying to turn at-risk kids away from gangs, drugs, and crime. We try to deal with behavior modification through confrontational therapy. We try to enable them to develop those transitional social skills so they can fit back into mainstream society, so they won't have disciplinary problems in schools or at the malls or any other different functions. So. March organizers hope to raise $2,000 to help the program. But along with the financial boost, Richardson says it gives the program another advantage. It's very important that we, we have rallies and marches and things of this sort to send out a message and signals to to not only the city itself and the city leaders but also the kids themselves and let these kids know that somebody cares about them somebody's concerned about their progress somebody's concerned about their, their livelihood and the situation that they're putting themselves in anthony hewlin 11 action news little rock ladies and gentlemen please meet your new miss arkansas no Nicole Bethman is the 36th young lady to walk away with the distinguishing title of Miss Arkansas, and with good reason. The 24-year-old Mississippi native has competed in numerous pageants, not to mention being second runner-up in last year's Miss Arkansas pageant. Also coming back as, as a contestant who had placed, there's a lot of pressure on you to perform. And people, and especially the judges, know that. They know your history. Um, they do a lot of research on the contestants, and they expect you to perform. So the pressure's great, very, very intense. 47 other women vied for the crown, which comes with tremendous responsibilities, like serving as Arkansas's official hostess and being a role model for children, two duties Bethman plans to tackle along with promoting her own platform for ending illiteracy through volunteerism in the United States. Funding is something that the state and the nation right now, we don't have a lot of. I mean, we need to face that. But we do have a lot of very capable, literate people in the state who can give graciously of their time to become tutors, work two to three hours a week, and help with the literacy program. When you are far from home, <laughs> Bethman plans to continue pursuing a degree in business administration after her reign is over. But for now, she's looking forward to meeting new people and making Arkansans proud of her at the Miss America pageant in September. Rochelle Davis, 11 Action News, Hot Springs.